welcome to Heavy Metal Rex. My name is Oase, and today didn't exactly turn out the way that I wanted to. What I was originally going to do was take my draggy outside and kind of just do a little bit of uh, uh, acceleration testing. Unfortunately, let me show you what stopped me. I woke up and found out that it was raining today. Uh, actually, it wasn't raining earlier. It was actually a, a nice sunny day, and then it became a unfortunate raining day. So. The draggy stuff is going to be put to a hold for now. Hopefully tomorrow, maybe this weekend, it might be slightly better days to go out. Instead, what I have is some goodies from Import Image Racing. Uh, specifically, these blue mirror caps that I have been seeing for some time, and uh, Jim actually just put out a video for them. This is the installation for the ones that have the turn signal on them. And I want to say, guys, if you're looking for any place that sells Subaru parts and even parts for other cars, Import Image Racing is definitely where you want to go. Uh, I've had nothing but good experience with them, also because like, I used to watch Cody on there a long time ago, and now with everything that they've been doing with the 22, I mean, their shipping is fast, their customer service is great, they have every part you're looking for. You know what, I gotta say, the prices aren't too bad either. So I appreciate them sending this over. Um, I was a little skeptical about these, and I'll tell you why, because when I originally saw them, I wasn't sure about like the blue tint, um, because there's really nothing else blue that's on the car. But the, the reason that it kind of sold me is their wide angle. And so because our manual cars don't come with the blind lane um, indicator on them, which a lot of these other cars do, which is kind of nice, I figured this is at least a nice safety addition to the vehicle. And plus, I kind of I like the way that the, um, the, the turn signal looks on it. It's just like a bunch of LED dots, and it looks kind of cool. So the installation, really, it shouldn't be that difficult. I did watch Jim's video. Originally, I had said that I wasn't going to watch it, and I was going to try to do it myself. I caved. They make really good videos. And that's another reason why I like Import Image Racing is they put out these parts, and then they have a YouTube channel where they actually show you how to install some of the harder ones, where, you know, if you're a weekend warrior or some guy just working on your garage like myself, as you guys seen some of my install videos, I'm not very good at them, you know? Sometimes I do need help, and I'm not afraid to admit that. And having those YouTube videos helps me out, because if I get stuck, or in this case, I've already watched it, so I kind of know what I'm going to be doing or what I'm going get, to get into, it's really helpful. Uh, I know that sometimes when you buy some of these parts, the instructions that come on the sheet of paper aren't always the best. So just something to think about. So on a high level, the steps are pretty simple. You know, first, we got to pop the mirror off, obviously. Then on the inside, we need to take off the, the door panel. Then behind the door panel, there's a bunch of bolts that hold the mirror assembly in, which obviously is going to have to be moved. Um, the cable does need to be run through either uh, there's a couple of ways that they can do it. Um, we're probably going to go with the cutting the, there's like some rubber grommets. We'll probably do that route. Uh, run the cable on the inside, tap it into a couple of cables that are underneath the dash, and then we will flip and do the passenger side, which is the same exact steps. Basically the easy part of this that I feel like most of us will be able to do is, and I, I'll be honest, I'm pretty much following every step that Jim had in this video because I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be no hero. So basically, I pushed the top of it in, and then from the bottom, I just pulled, and that seems to be pretty easy. It's got um, two leads here connected for the defroster, and I'm trying to figure out how to take those off. Looks like I can just pull them off. Pretty easy. So that's the easiest part. <laughs> Next, uh, we're gonna take the door jam off or the door card off on the inside. So to take this whole panel off, there is a plastic piece in there and then there's a plastic piece in here that we need to ever so gently pop off. Uh, this one right here just like a little plastic uh, cover for the screw. And you know what? This is really funny because as I'm pulling this out, I'm gonna show you something hilarious. So one of these guys actually popped off from my car a couple of, um, focus on it, a couple of weeks ago, Actually, a couple of months ago, one of these guys actually popped off my car, and I could not figure out for the life of me where it came from. It's actually sitting in my uh, center console, 
And I realize now it's in the inside and I never noticed it. And I guess it's from the other, from the passenger side, which is so funny. You know, I said that I would just do this install and then um, do voiceover, talk over it. And yet here I'm just doing what I always do, which is a 45 minute installation discussion. Now, in order to take this off, apparently all you do is just pull this. Now, much like the bumper, you got to give it a little bit of, um, I guess, don't be shy. <laughs> you know, because obviously you don't want to break it. Let's see. I don't know how I want to pull this. Hmm. There we go. So there is a little plastic piece that you need to pull off that they were showing. It's just on the side of the door. You can actually just grab, put your hand on there and pull it. Okay, so it actually it comes up. So now there's obviously there's going to be a couple of things uh, behind this. Let me see if I can get the camera on the side so you guys can see. So here is the stuff for the door and the lock. So this needs to come off. And then down below, you see these cables here are also plugged in. This is coming off of, um, I guess, oh yeah, this is connected to the window or the mirror itself. So that's gonna have to come off. So there's two clips down there and there's two plugs up here that need to be removed so this whole thing can come off. Pull is on it. There we go. All right, door's off. So here's the goopy part that they were referring to. So this has to come off and we gotta be careful with this this uh, gummy stuff because the area that we need to get to is right behind here and that's what's holding the mirror cap on this actually we're gonna have to unplug as well oh, that was a lot easier so the recommendation is to just kind of cut the plastic where the black stuff is because you want to be able to reuse that as much as you can so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my best guys that's not what I wanted to do. Basically what I'm doing is I'm cutting a little bit of the black from where it is so that it doesn't, so I don't waste it. Well, you know, that's actually not working at all. <laughs> so I'm going to pull it. If you do cut the black, try to cut it as close to the plastic as you can so you don't waste any of it. I know that in the comments, somebody did mention that this is a pretty vital part of um, keeping it sealed. So obviously you wanna do your best. So these guys are 10 millimeters, but they're in a super awkward spot. They're not very tight at all. With those three bolts off, this part's actually pretty easy. Uh, I did take the this um, cable off of the door, so that that just comes right off. So I completely forgot to mention this part. You actually have to take the mirror cap off, which I'm not exactly sure how to do. A do we do we do? I think this is good information to have, considering uh, I need to eventually do this. I see where it splits. I just need enough leverage to pop it off. Fantastic. I think a little more inspire motivation on this side. Hey, what in the hell? This actually shouldn't be that hard. You know, these professional videos, they make, it, they make it look so easy. Oh my goodness, I hope I didn't break it. They're really weak zip ties. Oh, there it goes, oh, got it. So there you go, so this is basically, I, what I did was I ended up putting it in on the side where this yellow tape is on the, the gray cable, and I got it over here. And so this is basically what we need to do, and what I'll do is I'll tape 
the wire harness that we have on this side. Let me get them out. And then I'll pull it through. So that's going to be the play. So this, all this is really dependent on the parts that you have, or the tools, rather, that you have available. And in my case, this is, this is the way we are going to go. So here's the, the wiring that they provide. Obviously, you've got two sides. You've got the side that's going to go into the actual mirror caps themselves that they have these metal leads. Not that side's going to stay here, but the side that needs to go through. And first what we'll do is we'll actually put this through this hole here. And now we're going to tape it to my zip tie. Let's see how well this works. We don't need a lot of tape. It's already a, a small area. And this is that gorilla stuff, so let's see how well I can put. Oh, relatively easy. So there we go. That's pretty easy. Let's keep the length that we wanted. So there's two. The wires have a black and white wire and a black wire. So this is the right side. Let's get the left side. And on the back of the mirrors, they are also color coordinated with a black and white and a black. So obviously, your play here is to put the black and white cable or black and white wire into the black and white and match them up like so. Whoops. Now those don't matter or I'm sorry, these these matter, the polar the uh, matching the wires up, but the defrosting part doesn't apparently matter. So you can plug any one of those in to any one, no problem. And then I should be able to push this back into the housing to get it clipped in because on the back of the mirror, it's just clipped in by basically the clips. Now something to remember is pull as much of this cable through or this wire through because you don't want it to interfere with the mechanisms of the, uh, you know, moving. All right, so it looks like that's good. Through the door, back through the door. And there is a section you need to make sure that it goes through, there's a hole on the inside, and it does need to fit, giggity. And did I do it right? Yeah, I didn't. Well, that's one, and then the main, the main plug that actually powers the side mirror. This will go through as well. Reach inside, make sure it's cool. Got my hands on it. That's good. And just put this back in just like that. And then we'll go back and put the three bolts back on and we'll move on to the hard part. All right, so I brought you guys down to this level so you can see a little bit better what we're doing. This needs to come off. This needs to come off. So this apparently you can just pull off. This, there's some sort of plug clip or something somewhere that needs to come off and then you can take this part off right here. So this, now let me just clip, 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 clip. This is actually good to remember if I decide to do any um, aftermarket audio installations. So it looks like these two are actually connected. So I need to find, it was mentioned that there's some sort of clip in here. Let me see if I can find said clip. Ouch. Oh, I see. It's up against the, it's right above the, uh, the little plate where you rest your foot. Oh, I get it. Ow, already, already hurt my thumbnail trying to pull it. So that's the clip up there. And so what I did was when I unplugged this, I actually just rotated it so I didn't have to take that off. 
And this right here is where we need to go. So let me figure out how to set up the camera so we can see this better. So here is the issue. We need to get the wire through here and there is a grommet that it needs to go through and basically it's gonna, the grommet is on this side and then there's another grommet over here. With the fishing line, what they did was they actually pulled the line through here, which is a very professional way to do it. But I don't have that and I'm trying to think if, there, if I even have anything that's serpentine enough to go through that to be able to pull the wires through. I'm gonna go inside and look real quick. If not, we're just gonna have to maybe, I'll see if I can maybe pull the grommet on both sides and just have this in my hand. I don't know how feasible that is, but I'm gonna try it out. So let me try out a couple of things and I'll bring you guys back in when I figure out a good solution. Okay, after trying a bunch of different things, this is the plan that I ended up with and I think it's actually a really good plan. So as you can see here, this is the, the grommet on the bottom, the grommet on top. What I did was I ended up pulling both grommets and making this little rubber hose thingy which is connected to the grommets, a straight line. Then, as you can see here, I shoved in a chopstick and it went from top, from bottom to top and see that it gets sticking out here. And what I'll do is I'll just tape the, um, the wire to the top and I'll pull the chopstick through. I think that this is probably the best that I'm gonna be able to do it with the tools that I have. And to be honest, actually, I kind of am proud of myself. That's pretty damn ingenious, you gotta admit. Um, I don't know how else I would have done it. I tried a couple of other things and nothing really worked. This is the only solution that worked. So now I'm going to see if I can tape, um, because it's limited amount of space, I'm just going to tape the top of that and pull that through. Okay, it's taped and I just need to now be able to pull this, give this enough slack, I wanted to get stuck. There it is. Okay, that, putting the grommet back was actually a big pain in the ass. Uh, I ended up having to pop out, there's a plastic piece in there that ended up having to pop out on the, the car side to get the grommet on. So, now, that we've got the wire in here, we are looking for this white cable. This is the only white cable, it's uh, three from the, from the left, three down and we need to stick one of these alligator clips on there. I've never used one of these before, but apparently you just put the cable in or the wire inside in the middle section and you just close it on top and it's supposed to do, this is do some things. So basically what we're doing is we're stripping, we're stripping the black and white wire to put into here and then the black wire will be the ground which we're gonna wrap around. There's a nut over here a bolt over here will take off and we'll wrap it around there and that'll be our ground. An easy crimp. Ah. There it is. That ain't going nowhere. Plug that in, see what happens. All right. So basically here's what we got. I got this guy down. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wrap this side and I'm gonna do the old fashioned way. Oh no! <sighs> I had a feeling that was gonna happen. In there. All right, moment of truth. Everything is plugged in. All the cables or all the, the wires are in where they're supposed to be. I haven't turned it on yet. I'm gonna go hit the flashers, uh, the um, hazards, and see what happens. Hooray, I did it. Not bad, it's actually working. And it doesn't look bad at all. Um, I love that you can't even tell that it's there when it's off. Like, and then as soon as you start turning, boom, there it is. That actually looks pretty badass. I gotta admit, that whole grommet situation was a pain in the ass, but just thinking about having to do it a second time. <laughs> but it's a good solution. I think, um, I think the um, pulling the grommet out and then sticking a chopstick through, that was the play. 
So I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna go get the other side done. I'm not gonna do it on camera because I'm just gonna I'm just gonna knock it out. It's the exact same steps. Uh, what I will do is there is a different wire you need to hook up on the other side. And so when I get to that point, I'll bring you guys back in. So I wanna point out something. I've been messing with this. This is the passenger side. I've been messing with this for probably 30 minutes. I was not able to get a zip tie through here. I ended up doing something else. Uh, here, there was some plastic, uh, this yellow tape that was on here. I actually ended up taking it off, pulling this through, and I'll even show you exactly what I ended up doing. I ended up pulling the black cable through, taping this, this wire to the, to the actual uh, larger cable, taped it, and then pulled it through. This, I would suggest doing that on the other side as well because this took a long time, longer than it should have. But I, so I wanted to point that out, that this, there is an easier way to do that, and that was the way that I was able to do it. Okay, so now we're at the passenger side, and this is where things get a little tricky because it's not the first panel. It's not this panel up here now we're looking at. It's the panel right below, and it's actually gonna be this green cable right here, and this green wire right here that I'm hitting with this chopstick that I used. Got, I gotta tell you, this side actually gave me a lot of trouble. So I'm gonna run the cable. I'm gonna run, I keep saying cable because I'm so used to IT stuff. I'm gonna run the wire through the door or the, um, the car. I'll bring it over here. I'm gonna get it patched up and I'll bring you guys back in when it's done and uh, hopefully working. All right guys, so that actually took a about two and a half hours. Um, some of it was experimentation on my part. Some of it was me trying to copy what Jim did in, in his video and I ended up having to find my own solutions, uh, which was, it was difficult, I'm not gonna lie. And I guess the difficulty in this wasn't exactly that it was hard, it's just what you needed to do was very specific and it's gonna depend on the tools that you have and your own personal ingenuity because some of the things that I tried just didn't work. And in the end, the whole chopstick method actually worked. And in my case, I ended up having to do a little bit more when I was uh, threading the cable through the actual uh, mirror cap. So that, it's all really gonna depend on you. I still think they look really good. I think they look awesome. Um, I'm actually gonna go pick up my daughter here in a few minutes, so I'll be able to drive with it. Um, one thing that I did end up doing, which I'm gonna have to open the car, I'm gonna have to open the door again. Uh, let me show you real quick. So, <laughs> The passenger window's fine, the driver's side window does this. Doesn't go all the way. So somewhere it's stuck, I'm gonna have to pull the door panel off and see if I can figure out where it's stuck. But this is, these are the kind of things that I think are important for regular people, just like, you know, the weekend guys, just mess around with this. You're gonna run into some issues, so definitely put some time aside to figure out those issues. My overall recommendation, when it comes to aesthetics, I think it looks, they look really cool. And I definitely would get them. But if you are gonna get them, watch Jim's video, take it step by step, ask questions. Don't get frustrated because, <laughs> oh man, the try to do the alligator clip on the passenger side was actually a really tough. Because if you got small hands, small fingers, it's easier. If you got big hands, big fingers like me, it's a little difficult. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is not what I expected to do today and I cannot believe like that th this is what we ended up doing, but badass. Anyway, hope to see you guys in the next one.